Hi everyone, just wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about the area of a regular polygon. Um, now, uh, using, you're probably wondering why we're kind of doing this now, um, given that we really haven't been talking much about the world of area. Um, but I've decided to put it here because um, it uses a lot of trig. And since we're learning about trig, I thought it'd be a nice kind of way to kind of show a, a way that we can use trig to solve different problems that we could encounter in geometry. Um, so one of the big things I do want you to, to remember is a little bit about special right triangles. Um, it, it's been a while since we've specifically spoken about them just because of everything that's been going on. Uh, so just as a quick reminder, in the special right triangles, um, there's two special right triangles. There's the 45, 45, 90 triangles. And we know the two, 45, the, the two sides opposite the 45 degrees are going to be the same. Right, that makes sense based on what we know about the inequalities. You know, if one side has a bigger, uh, if there's one angle that's bigger, they'll be opposite the uh, longer side. So these two are the same. Makes sense that they have the same length. Um, and then if you did the Pythagorean theorem, you know this would be that side length times the square root of two. So as you can see here, this is, you know, um, if here's my side length of the square root of seven, over here, right, this is going to be the square root of seven, which is the side length times the square root of two. So this is going to be the square root of 7 times the square root of 2, uh, which gives you the square root of 14. Now it's tempting to try and do something to that, but you know it's just going to break into 2 and 7, uh, neither of which are a perfect square, so you really cannot do anything else with this. So we're going to just leave this alone. All right. Now, then we have the 30, 60, 90 triangles. So the 30, 60, 90 triangles are a little bit tougher. Um, so the 30, 60, 90 triangles are as follows. If we have the 60 here, this will be the longer side. 30 here, that'll be the, the shorter side. Um, usually we kind of refer to this as like, you know, y, x, insert, this, this is kind of the baseline. The one opposite the 30 is kind of your reference point, right? That's just your, your number, x. Um, then the hypotenuse is two times your, your kind of your reference side, right? Your two times your length of your short side. Um, and then, um, and, and we saw exactly where this comes from, right? This comes from if we took a uh, equilateral triangle and cut it in half. And then that left this as um, your side length times the square root of three, right? So what are we looking for here? Here we have uh, the side opposite. We're looking for the side opposite the 60 and we have the hypotenuse. So since we have the hypotenuse, which is two, we know that um, the opposite 30 is half of that, so one. Um, and then this down here is just gonna be one times the square root of three, which is just the square root of three. All right, so just kind of keep those in mind um, when we're going through these problems. Okay, so what are our goals? Really, we're going to use the trigonometry and the special right triangles to find the area of regular polygons. So there is a nice formula that we're going to use for these. Um, you just have to be careful because um, to, to use it, you usually will have to do um, something with trig. All right, so Please uh, just kind of recall what a regular polygon is. So a regular polygon is going to ultimately uh, just be a polygon where the sides and the angles are all the same. Um, so it's equilateral and equiangular. Uh, the sum of the angles will be, um, you know, 180 times n minus two. Um, you could kind of remember that by drawing, you know, the, the triangles here, right? So, you know, there's always gonna be two less triangles if you draw the, the diagonals. Um, things like that. So, you know, you have your regular, um, you know, uh, well, the equilateral triangle is the regular triangle, square is the regular quadrilateral, um, then you have like the regular pentagon, regular hexagon, they don't really have special names after that. Um, now, the area, how to find that? Well, all you're going to do is you're going to um, do this simple formula. You're just going to do A is equal to one half the perimeter times the apothem or a potham, depending on how you pronounce it. I usually say apothem. Um, now, you might be asking yourself, well, what, first of all, I know the perimeter. The perimeter is just all the sides added up. And then what's the apothem? Well, that is just going to be this, right? If you drew a circle around the regular polygon, right, if you drew a circle around it, you would take the center of that circle, draw a line to the midpoint of one of the sides, and that would be the apothemis. So it would be the same for any of them. Um, one other piece of information, or you know, 
that means that if I were to kind of like draw the triangles uh, inside, um, those would be the radius of the circle. So do keep that in mind. Now you might be asking yourself, well, where does this formula come from? Um, well, it's actually a lot more straightforward than it might seem, right? So well, we know what the, oops, I need a different color. There we go. Right, so if I drew this triangle, right now I have five triangles. And we know the area of each of the triangles is one half base times height. Well, the apothem is just the height, right? So that's where the, the apothem is coming from. And then essentially the base, they're all the same. So, you know, it'd be like whatever this base is, this base, this base. So we could do it five times and add it all together, or we could just bypass that and say, well, instead of just doing it five times and adding it all together, why don't I just say it's the perimeter and then it all is done in one fell swoop, right? Um, so that's just where it comes from. It just comes from breaking it up into triangles. All right. So let's actually, um, oh, one more important thing to know. The center or central angle of a regular polygon, um, you find it by uh, taking the number of sides and dividing 360 by it, right? And I mean, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, if here's my, you know, right, you can't, it makes a circle. So you know it's going to have to add up to 360. Um, so that's why it makes sense that I, I, I'm saying it's um, 360 divided by uh, the number of sides. Right. So you want things like, you know, um, you, you want things that are going to give you things like 45. You want things that are going to give you angle measures um, that are nicer. Right. Yeah. So just as a heads up, if we wanted to find this, the measure of each central angle, right, this would be 360 divided by six, which is going to be 60. So that's going to be a really nice one, right? 360 divided by six is um, 60, right? So that means you're essentially going to have equilateral triangles, uh, which makes your life easier. Pentagon, 360 divided by five. Well, what's that going to be? So that's what, 37, 72. All right, maybe not as nice, but I mean, it's still workable, right? That's going to be one that's going to use trig. And then a nonagon, don't forget a nonagon is something with nine sides. So you do 360 divided by nine. 36 divided by nine is four, so 40. Um, so that one is going to be another one that's going to use trick. But you want things that like will give you the, um, the 60, the 90, things like that. Right. All right. So let's actually go through the process now of finding the area. Okay. So here, what are we given? Well, we're given the apothem or apothem. Um, so what do we need to do? So, well, they give us that information and they give us one of the sides, right? They give us the side here is 12. So this is 12 and uh, the apothem is 16.5. So we basically have all the information. The only thing we have to be careful of is now we need to make sure we can count correctly, which is the hardest part. So this is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is actually a nonagon. Now, um, so what does that mean? What's my perimeter? My perimeter is nine times 12, right? So we'd have um, 108. So uh, you could just plug in nine times 12 in for your perimeter if you didn't feel like doing the calculation out. Um, but so then what we're gonna do is our area is one half perimeter, 108 times um, your apothem, which is 16.5. Um, so that's just going to be 54 times 16.5. What is that? 54 times 16.5. 891. Didn't give us a unit, so units squared. All right, so same thing over here. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sided chip, so a hexagon. Um, uh, it should tell you that these are regular, but I know it did in where I got these from. It just I didn't copy it over. So these are regular polygons. Um, okay, so we have one half six times ten, right? So this is actually one where it doesn't really make a huge difference for me to multiply out in advance. Times five, square root of three. All right, so that's going to be um, sixty divided by three is thirty. 
times 5 square root of 3. So 150 square root of 3. That's units squared. Okay, so that's simple enough. Um, now, the one thing you do need to be careful of is if they don't give you all of that information, you will have to find it. All right. So, for example, in this particular problem, they uh, they don't give you all the information, right? You can find it though. You have the you have the skill set. You have the tools. So we know if this is ten, and this is also ten, right? Um, so essentially, what do I have here? I have a triangle, and I want the f, right? Which is going to be the height. So that makes a right angle. All right. Now this is a pentagon. So what's the central angle? Well. We have to do that calculation now. Um, 360 divided by 5 was uh, 72, if I remember correctly. Right? 360 divided by 5 is 72. Yes. Okay. So then you're going to... That gives us that this whole, right, if we drew this, this whole part right here is 72. Okay? So essentially what we have here is we have, here's my right triangle. This angle up here, this is half of the central angle. So this is 36. And I know that this side right here is 10. And I want this height. Okay? There's my app of them. So how do I actually find this? Well, what can we do here? If this is 36 and I have adjacent and hypotenuse, I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of 36 equals adjacent, my apothem, over 10. So the apothem equals 10 cosine of 36. All right? So what are we going to do now? Well, now we can actually solve that. We would have to use our calculator. Uh, don't forget to be in degree mode, cosine of 36. So I end up with my apothem being 8.1. All right, so now I have the apothem. The only problem is now I still need the side. Um, so what am I going to do? Well, I already have this set up, except, you know, this is my side. So now I'm going to have to do, you know, sign. Uh, side over 10. So again, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 10. So my side is equal to, you know, 10 sine of 36. Let me just change this to a sign here. So it should be 5.9. Now, I'm still not quite there yet. That is only this part right here, which is half of the whole thing. So that would make the entire side length, right, 5.9 times 2. Um, so which should be 11.8, right? So 11.8. So I have a side of 11.8. I have an apothem of 8.1. And I have five sides. So my area is one half uh, 11.8 times 5 times 8.1. Now, you might be asking yourself, why did I bother to do that? because I'm dividing it by two anyway. So yeah, if you didn't really want to do that, you could have just written in the 5.9 and ignored the two, the, the one half, um, but you get the point. So if I multiply that all out, I'm just gonna plug it all into the calculator, 5.9 times five times 8.1, I would get uh, 238.95. All right, now we got one more. I'm going to use a different color so you can see it better. All right, so now I have the side is 15. And how many sides do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight. So, well, what do we need to do? Let's first of all, let's figure out the central angle here. So 360 divided by eight is 45. Okay, so I have a triangle where this is 45. So if I cut that in half, right? So if I cut that in half, 
First of all, this is not 15, this is 7.5. Also, when I cut the angle in half, that's no longer uh, 45, that's 22.5. Now I want the apple. I don't give a, I, I really don't care about the radius. It, it, it doesn't help me with this calculation. So um, I just want this. So what do I have here? I have tangent of 22.5 is equal to 7.5 over A. Okay. All right, I'm going to multiply both sides and then divide by the tangent. So I'm going to get A is equal to 7.5 over tangent of 225. Now, um, 7.5 divided by tangent of 22.5 is 18.1. All right, so there's my apothem. So that gives me the area here is 1 half 15 times 8 times 18, oops, 18.1. Okay, um, so do be careful. This I'm realizing now this is multiplication, but it looks a little bit like a decimal place. Um, so one half, let's, let's uh, four times 15, which is 60. So 60 times 18.1 is about what? Whoops, eight six units. Right, and there you have it. So pretty much, it's a any other problem that you do is going to be some sort of derivation of that. Uh, you like the ones that give you either the apothem or the side, you like less the ones that give you the radius, but it's still doable, right? You just need to be careful with what you are calculating. All right. So anyway, that is um, everything about the world of finding the area of a regular polygon. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.